All right, folks. Hi, and welcome back to you, Plastic Models by Regular Dude. And this is going to serve a double purpose. This is uh, part three of the um, Hobby Boss M4A3 148 scale project. Um, so I'm going to be updating my viewers on that. But this is also going to serve as a kind of a you know how I do my priming how I apply primer to my kits now it's probably going to be boring as I'll get out but you know I've had people ask in the past like hey you know what do you do when you prime or paint or whatever so I figure I'm going to start doing some of this stuff um, and get it to where people can see it so um, let me change my camera angle and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to use to spray the primer and uh, what I'm going to prime it with. All right, so let's change up. All right, so here is what I do when I um, shoot my primer. Okay, the materials I use, I have a bowl of water here I use to help clean up. And then when I start cleaning out my airbrush, I, uh, I pour the uh, expended stuff in there. Um, got the kit. Got my primer, which in this case is the Steinol Res Black. Okay, the Steinol Res, you know, uh, it's really good stuff. I really like it. Works really well. Um, so I'm not going to blab too much about that. So I use that. Um, I have a couple of brushes here that I use for cleaning the airbrush, some paper towel or kitchen towel depending on where you are. Uh, for cleanup I use a combination I use first I use ultimate airbrush cleaner um, and the reason I use that is because it works really well. Um, I had other brands of uh, thinners and stuff uh, depending on which primer or paint I was using, what brand but now I just I've discovered that this stuff works really well. Um, heard a lot of hoopla about it, and I'm you know generally I'm a skeptical person, but I like to try stuff out, and this stuff truly does work well, and it works well with all brands of uh, acrylic paints, including Tamiya, oddly enough. And the airbrush I'm going to use in this case is my um, Iwata HP M2, which is a single action. And the uh, paint flow is controlled with this dial right here. Now this is a really, really nice airbrush for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's great for doing primer. Um, I use this pretty much exclusively for uh, shooting primer unless it's a really big uh, kit. I will use my, uh, my siphon feed um, Pache single action but for stuff like this and even just a regular size uh, 135th scale kit this is plenty um, I have it set I'm using my CO2 cylinder and if you would like to see anything on that I have another uh, video I posted earlier on if I remember to put the link in the description I will uh, the CO2 cylinder with regulator and gauges I have on it. That's what I use instead of a compressor. That's why I never have compressor noises going on. Uh, let's see. And I have it set for about 18 pounds. And it'll fluctuate a little bit. Uh, it will drop down to about 16. Um, and this stuff flows great. Uh, some people say that you need to use a really high pressure. And some people might have to. Uh, but I I do okay with uh, with about you know setting at 18 and you know actually running at about 16. And then I have my uh, cleaning pot here. I use that to rest the airbrush on when I'm filling it. And then I blow all of the uh, cleaners and stuff into that. So let me go ahead and get my airbrush filled up and we'll get cracking. All right. So once I get the uh, airbrush loaded up, I check my flow. I've got this set on about two and a half. Should be just about right. I'm going to start with the uh, 
with the turret here that way I can hold it by the barrel and then while I'm spraying that by the time I get done with that this will be drying I can spray the barrel so let's take a look here kick it up to about three all right Now, if you've never used this stuff, it really is nice, and it's very forgiving. If you get a little heavy-handed, it still levels out really nicely on a smooth surface. And if it's on a rough surface, you pretty much don't have much to worry about. Now some people, you know, really like to have a lot of ventilation and stuff, and you can hear fans going, and um, paint booths and all that kind of stuff, and that is awesome, and I plan on getting one of these, those one of these days, but the room that I work in right now is nowhere near being airtight, so it is not an issue with any kind of, not that there's much, um, going on as far as fumes with this stuff but you know you don't need to be breathing any kind of particulate matter I'll spray a little bit on there like that okay set that aside see I, so now something else I like about this stuff is I don't get any tip dry there's no weird stuff going on on the uh, let's see how much, paint, how much primer yeah, I'm good for now Now, if you let it sit for a second, you'll get spitting just from the paint that's bleeding out through the nozzle. All right, so let's get cracking some more on here. Not real exciting stuff, is it? But hey, I've had people ask, so I'm obliging. That's where it gets tricky. See, this is one of the reasons I normally leave all this stuff off. It's a lot easier to paint when it's not on there. But a lot of people do this, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. I probably won't do it again. I'm gonna kid this man. You'll notice I have a glove on. And that is because this stuff is a pain to wash off. It's acrylic, but man does it stick. See, when you install this, or when you uh, put this stuff on here, it's just, man, it's a lot harder to get down inside of there with the paint stuff. It can be done, but it's not quite as easy. Now, I'm not going to paint this whole thing. I'm just going to kind of do this one side just to show you. Now you'll notice I'm not priming the bottom. A lot of people freak out about the bottom of their model. Like if it, you know, has inappropriate detail or if there's, you know, ejector pin marks or whatever. But I just, I don't find it to be a deal. I'm not going to turn this thing over. If I was, you know, going to do a wreck and it was tipped over or whatever, then all right. But...
So there you go. See, that's man, this stuff just this is really good primer. I really like it. Finish this off. And I tend to use uh, a, con a contrasting primer. If this were like say an olive drab, a kit molded in olive or uh, you know like a dark green plastic, I would be using gray. But this one's molded light, so I'm doing it with black just because I can make sure that I'm doing a proper job. Sometimes it's hard to see if the color is too close. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue paint, uh, priming this and then come back for some paint. Alright, and if I was just going to clean this up, but for those who might be interested, here's what I do. <sighs> I've already started, so sorry, but I had, uh, you know, a lot of scum in there from the uh, primer. So what I do is I take the cleaner, just put a little bit in there, then I take my shortened off cheap testers brush, you can buy them a whole pack of them for almost nothing at local hobby stores and they're really good because you know number one they're cheap so if you wreck them no big deal but they're really durable so then what I do is once I've got it scrubbed down really good inside then I take a, uh, a paper towel sorry take a paper towel crack it open a bit Using my little finger, I cover up the nozzle, and I put that over so stuff doesn't go flying everywhere, and I backflush it. Now, there's a lot of people that say, oh, you shouldn't backflush it, you'll ruin the seals, and blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe that's true on some, but I can honestly never, I can say I've never heard of somebody actually ruining a seal doing this. And the seal is, you know, it was like, well, it's going to get back where your trigger is. Well, that's what the seal is for. It's going to keep stuff from getting back into the trigger area so it's it's a non-issue and as a matter of fact I can't remember his name but if you watch uh, Badger airbrushes the owner of Badger airbrushes he demonstrates how he cleans airbrushes and uh, he uses the back flush method so can't be too bad so I got a little bit of uh, scum in there so I'm going to use a Q-tip, cotton bud, whatever, and I'm going to get that scrubbed out of there because it will skin over a little bit. Okay, get that cleaned up, and then I'm going to back flush it again. And what that's going to do is it's going to blow any particulate stuff back into the bowl. So <clears throat> whenever you do spray, start spraying cleaner through your nozzle, it's not going to clog up with little pieces, or it shouldn't anyway. Okay, one more time. And I also have to say that there are those on YouTube which will get in and they will say, you know, this is all you need to clean your airbrush. And they, I, I'm serious. I saw this guy had this little ultra tiny cup, probably smaller than this. He filled it with thinner, and that is all he used to clean his airbrush. Now, that's all well and good. I've never been able to do that. I'd rather waste, you know, cleaner going overboard with my cleaning as opposed to wrecking my airbrush so all right so as you can see it looks pretty clean in there from all that back flush and everything so let me spray some on this paper towel here and see what we get ah, it's pretty clean and blue little tiny bits and particles in there now that's something that you're going to be more prone to find or I find I'm more prone to finding in um, 
whenever I use an acrylic, uh, a water-based acrylic, as opposed to like Tamiya. To me, acrylics. All right, now you might not be able to see that, but on that needle in there, there is paint, and that's from the paint that got up inside of the little channel there, where the needle comes out of the main body of the uh, airbrush. But I have a method for that too. See, there's more right there. You just keep wiping it off be patient and when you think you have your airbrush clean it's not and there's a lot of people that have just all kinds of wacky things they do or don't do or you know people may look at my cleaning method and just say you're an idiot no well, that's fine it works I haven't had too much trouble with uh, clogged airbrushes either so I think I do a pretty pretty good job and you know just like anything else like I say in all my videos there's more than one way to do things the 10 by 10 rule ask 10 people get 10 different answers or methods this is mine and it served me well just like Luke's droids in Return of the Jedi alright so that's looking pretty good so I've got that pretty clean. So what I do now is I take my paper towel, the clean part of the paper towel, if I can find one, and I just wipe on the inside really good, get any residual cleaner out, and it'll evaporate pretty quick, especially if it's warm. And then just kind of pull that out like that. Then what I like to do <coughs> is taking a clean cotton bud put just a little bit of cleaner on there like that and gently clean out the inside of the cap there if you really need to scrub it get that needle out of there out of the way that way you can just really get in the in the edges so that's all nice and clean. So the last thing I like to do, and that's just to dissolve anything that might be back up inside of there, is I like to take my lacquer thinner in this handy tester's bottle. That's what tester's uh, um, universal acrylic cleaner bottles are good for. Putting lacquer thinner in it. So I put some lacquer thinner in there. And I just let it sit for a little bit. I hang it in the cleaner like that and just let it sit for a little bit and then what I'll do is after it's sat for a few minutes I'll crack it open so there's a little trickle going through the nozzle and just let it if there's anything in there it'll dissolve it away then I do a back flush for any more particulate stuff and then once I dump once I back flush it I dump it so I don't blow anything through there if there is and then spray it clean it out I'm done all right, so that's how I do that. So hopefully that was uh, that was helpful. So that's how I prime stuff. So I will continue on with the painting as soon as my primer cures. All right, now that the primer has been um, applied and it's looking dandy, except for that little bit right there where I spilled some stinking cleaner on it um, I can do some paint so the paint I'm going to use is uh, Tamiya I'm going to use Tamiya paints and the first one I'm going to use is flat white flat white you say I'm sure most of you watching this know of the uh, black and white method basically what it is is uh, you spray some white on here um, just mainly in the center of the panels, larger areas, highlights, stuff like that. Leaving the edges dark and uh, then overspraying with uh, slightly thinner 
mixture of your base color and that shadowy stuff supposed to shine through so I've seen it done by other modelers uh, mostly the person I've seen it use it the most is Andy at Andy's Hobby Headquarters if you haven't seen his YouTube channel check it out it's pretty good you, you can create some pretty nice models and he uses this method and I want to try it for myself and see um, how it works um, I, I generally tend to shy away from the quote unquote modulation type stuff um, I've tried it and I just, you know, I, I haven't just really got that into it. Um, I generally get color change and stuff like that through weathering. But I want to try this and see how it works because it looks interesting. And I'd like to see, you know, in person what it looks like. Because sometimes, you know, on a video camera it can, you know, look a little different. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get, and for this one I'm using my uh, uh, Neo for Iwata TRN1 trigger and uh, because I'm going to be doing some finer work so I want to make sure that I don't jack anything up and for this since I'm going to be getting close I'm going to be taking this cap off so that's um, from what I have read <clears throat> and it kind of makes sense that when you're doing stuff up close uh, with this on there it can create some weird stuff going on with your with your with your paint and your flow so I'm gonna try it see what I can do so let me get some paint ready um, I may film part of this I may not we will see so hang tight okay so here's one feature that I like about this airbrush I'll talk about real quick is this back here you can you can thread in or out and what that does is that controls so when you pull the trigger it's like a two-stage trigger on a rifle you pull the trigger back, and that's your air, and then it's going to stop. That's when it's connecting with the uh, with the needle. You pull back further, and the paint starts to flowing. Now, normally, your paint flow—the farther you pull it back, the more paint comes out. But you can limit that with this. That way, you can control. How much paint you have coming out so you don't like overdo it so that's what i am doing here so maybe this not shaking too much so basically i'm just going to spray some paint i'm getting a lot of overspray i gotta figure that out that's kind of disturbing but i've got the trigger pulled all the way back and it's not flooding so it's giving me some good control a lot of overspray, I gotta figure that out. I'm still learning with this brush. Okay, so basically that's what you do. You fill that stuff in like that, and then when you spray your other color over top, uh, you maintain that highlight. Or you maintain that shadow along the edge. a little bit more That's all there is to it. So I'm going to continue on painting like that and we'll show you what it looks like uh, when I'm all done.